God is good. All the time. And in Africa they also say something more. That's his nature. Wow, wow, wow. I asked them why and what is wow. They said it, that means wonderful. Three times because the Father is wonderful, the Son and the Holy Spirit. God is good. All the time. And that is his nature. Wow, wow. Praise the Lord. My dear children of God, this is all about discipleship. For me as a priest, I am also a disciple, but not a true. But I am trying to be a true disciple of the Lord. I am trying. We can only try. Because there is a word of God in the book of prophet Isaiah. This is chapter 64. Verse 6. We have all become like one who is unclean. And all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. Even if all our good deeds are kept together, it's us worth us a filthy cloth. So that's why no one can claim to be on the earthly life that he is a true disciple. We are all in the process of becoming a true disciple. I just wanted to tell you how did and how I started to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Me, I want to share a small testimony. I am born in a family of 10 children. We are eight brothers and two sisters. My own three brothers are also priests and I am the fourth priest in that family. Now, my parents are still alive. My father is 98 years. My mother is 88 years. They are 68 years in marriage. They are, they are still strong, my parents, by God's grace. They are great, wonderful people. And I thank God for my parents. Now, I am the ninth born out of 10 children. The last born is my sister. Actually, I joined the seminary not to become a priest. My mother used to be to me three times a day. And you know, I was so naughty. But my father never used to be to me. Usually, children love their father more than their mother. But for me, because my father never beat me, I thought I have to do something for my dad. So I came to know being in a poor family, it is impossible if I just remain at home. So I thought the better option to join the seminary. My brothers, one is a Don Bosco priest, Salatian of Don Bosco, and another priest is missionary of Francis de Sales, Yemma Safas, and another priest is a diocesan priest. But for me, I'm a Vincentian. I avoided their congregations because I don't want to bring shame to their life because my intention is not to become a priest, but to study in a secret congregation, get good education, get out of it, and get married, get a good job, and take care of my parents. This was my original intention. That's why being the fourth priest, I joined a congregation. Those days, it was not so known, the Vincentian congregation. So I secretly joined it. It takes 12 years to become a priest. When you are in the seminary, if you don't create a problem, you will not be sent away. You can be sent away for small, small things. But years passed, 10 years passed. Then I came to know with a shock, it's only two more years. If I continue, I will automatically become a priest and I don't want to become a priest. And I shared this to one of my friends and I told him, I feel I cannot continue. I want to leave. I don't want to become a priest. Then my friend is also my a brother. He told me, Anthony, if you are called, if you leave, you will never succeed in your life. 
if you have a call and if you live you will never succeed in your life and he explained to me certain incidents there were some people used to visit in the seminary they used to carry some handicapped children children with down syndrome different problems different people then they told us they were ex priests they were ex seminarians they left god's call now they are going through all these you know when you are small you don't know about how god works i got fear inside of me i thought if i have a call and if i disobey then my life will be a problem but now i want to get a confirmation i am not called by god so i decided to attend many retreats telling you the truth i also came to this divine retreat center you know i am from kerala i we always attend only malayalam retreat because i don't want to hide my identity i attended an english retreat though i did not know much english i just wanted to i know there are messages that many counselors have great gift of messages i was attending the retreat expecting just one message i wanted to listen i wanted to hear something like this there is somebody hiding in this retreat center by name anthony and the holy spirit is telling he can go and get married and move on with his life <laughs> this is the this is the only thing i want to hear there are sometimes names are announced many healings are announced i just wanted to hear a name called anthony but no mention about anthony many different strange names are called out but anthony was never mentioned then somebody came and a priest and he started preaching like this hebrews chapter 13 was 8 jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever when the priest preached i heard in my ears like this my son i am the same who called you yesterday i am the same today and i will be the same forever but my son you are not the same your love for me is not the same there was a time you had great love for me but you yourself have gone far away psalm 103 verse 20 we read bless the lord o the angels who do the bidding who do obey the commands of god my dear sisters and brothers when you listen to the word of god when you are at this divine retreat center the moment you listen to the word of god the lord sends the angels to interpret this word into your ears however even though i got this interpretation jesus still loves me he still calls me he has no change it's only me who has the change still i bargained i told jesus me i have only one life i don't want to waste this life for someone i have never seen and when you attend the retreat you will be surprised to listen even the non christians give testimony as if they have seen jesus and you are a catholic and then jesus has never appeared to you and you want to give your life for someone you have never seen sisters and brothers for me to leave the seminary i had three major challenges one thing i have never seen jesus in my life it's not a small challenge it's a huge problem for me because if i have to give up my life i want to see him at least once maybe for a moment just for 2 seconds it's enough for me but i told him i have to see you but we know it's not very easy can we see jesus do you believe that can we ever see jesus we read this is acts chapter 22 verse 14 the word of god says then he said the god of our ancestors has chosen you to know his will to see the righteous one and to hear his own voice when the lord chose saul when the lord made him paul as his apostle the lord told him the lord i have chosen you to know the will of god to see the righteous one and to hear his voice and that is why we have the letters of saint paul who told him this is right 
This is all about love. Love is kind, patient, gentle. Love is not rude. Who told Paul? God told him. God can speak. He spoke. That's why you have Bible. God appears to people. That's why we have the picture of the portrait of the divine mercy. The Lord appeared to Saint Maria Faustina Kowalska. God appeared to Saint Margaret Mary Alacoque. That's why we have the sacred heart of Jesus and his devotion. Praise the Lord. Again, the second problem, the issue, the challenge I had. I loved my father so much. I had great respect and great love for my dad. Is it a problem? It is a huge problem to become a disciple of Jesus. I only understood later on. And the third problem I had, you know when you are going through a challenge, when you are going through a difficulty, you will always try to defend yourself. The third challenge was I found many priests going astray. Many priests giving a bad example or leading a double life. You know, 99 priests are leading a holy, righteous, simple life. But when you are in a crisis, you don't want to become a priest, you need to oppose the priesthood, you will look for that one percentage of the priest who may give a bad example. Those days, whenever a news appears against a priest, I used to cut that newspaper and I collect the news against the priest. So whenever somebody is asking, Anthony, why you don't want to become a priest? I will just give them these newspaper cuttings. You look at this. This is the way the priests live. Then why do I want to become one of them? I also have a tendency to go astray, to give bad example. So better for me not to become a priest, but to become a good citizen. I can also serve God, not as a priest leading a double life. So I had three challenges. One, I have never seen Jesus. Two, I loved my father. Three, I have seen priests giving bad example. Sisters and brothers, with these challenges, I attended a retreat to know the will of God, to know whether God has called me. So the priest preached and he said, Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. My son, I am the same, I have called you. I have not changed, but you are not the same. You have changed. Many of us, as we are seated here as the youngsters, there were times we were altar boys. We loved Jesus. We had no problem whatever our parents used to tell us. We, they tell us to kneel down, we used to kneel down. We had such profound love for God. But as we have go, as we have moved on in our life, we have grown up, we started questioning. We have now at present, our problem is we have too many questions. We are highly rational. We are highly reasonable. We cannot just admit anything easily. We have a question first. Why I believe? Is there a God? Then why he has not spoken to me? This priest is telling God spoke to him. Then why can't that same God speak to me? I'm also his son. We have too many questions. Sisters and brothers, with these questions, I attended the retreat. The priest saw, said the word of God. Jesus Christ is the same. But it did not convince me. Then there came an announcement. This is the time for counseling. However, you can only go to one counselor. This was the advice. So I thought, at least from the counselor, I can get a guidance in my life. Then I went to a counselor. I sat in front of this counselor, this man. And he asked me, why are you here? Then I told him, it's you who are supposed to tell me why I am here. I want you to speak to me. I know Holy Spirit speaks to you. And I want to know the will of God. Sisters and brothers, though I was a seminarian, I am Brother Anthony. When I registered my name, I did not put to brother because I want to hide my identity. Because I was almost decided not to continue to be a priest. Then this man, because I am not telling anything, he prayed, he opened the Bible and he asked me, Did you ever think of becoming a priest? Then I just told him, no, I have, uh, I told him, I, I, I don't know. Then he said, if you don't know, I think there is a call. I think there is a call. Then I told him, maybe it's a mistake. Maybe you are praying for somebody else. 
sisters and brothers i slowly left that place but then i am confused secretly i went to another counselor another counselor some said no problem you are free god never forces anyone you take your own decision you have to lead your own life i am not the one to take decision for you so many advisors some told me you are called some told me you are not called you know when the priest tell you go to only one counselor then i understood it is true the first counselor told me the truth the second third fourth fifth confusion actually after counseling i was more confused because i disobeyed my dear sisters and brothers with this confusion i have decided to leave i wrote a letter to my provincial superior and i copied the letter to the rector and to the superior general and officially i left the seminary not to become a priest i wrote in the letter after studying almost 10 years in the seminary because i don't have a god experience and i feel i am not called by god i leave the seminary however i am very grateful to the seminary that made me to reach this far i am grateful please pray for me and bless me and i signed i gave the letter the provincial blessed to me and i left the seminary sisters and brothers if you leave they will never take you back because as religious priests we have vows we can't break it once you break it then you have to restart from the beginning it's it's very difficult once you have left you will never be taken back so i left the seminary i reached home now if you study in the seminary for 10 years actually you cannot get a job once you leave the seminary you don't get a salary in the seminary you don't get any kind of benefits what you study in the seminary spirituality and philosophy with the spirituality you are not going to get a job you need to still go to a university you need to get another degree or a masters in order to get some kind of job and imagine when i leave the seminary i don't have friends i don't have neighbors i don't have anyone who can pay my university fees the only thing i can have i can depend upon my parents and my dad my father has to help me i reached home and i told my father i am not going back to the seminary i have come back then my then and i told my dad now as i am back our neighbors our relatives our people will definitely ask why antony is back he supposed to be a priest now we can see him around and i told my dad please help me you tell them that i have come back to help him i have come back to help my dad i told him to defend me you please tell them that i have come back to help you then my dad is telling me antony it's you who came back you go and tell them why you have come back i cannot say that those words broke my heart into its core my heart was completely shattered sisters and brothers i left the seminary because i loved my dad then i come to know he does not love me the way i loved him then i came to know he cannot defend me then i came to know he is not happy that i have come back now you have to remember i have no where to go my life is as what to be put in a waste box no job no money no university no where to sleep and now my father disowned me i don't know what to do it was 7 pm i lost sleep never in my life i had a problem of sleeplessness the moment i i just lay in the bed i got sleep now i even lost his sleep i am nowhere in this world having no identity no dignity no finance nothing 7 pm i told my jesus you know in the past i fought with jesus i told him enough is enough you go and find the good people i am a bad person and i want to remain a bad person you go and find the good people to be a priest that is not my call i don't want it you leave me alone i have really really 
offended Jesus, but now I have no way to turn. And I told Jesus, forgive me, Jesus, please forgive me, give me another chance. It was 7 p.m. Still, I remember he came to me in a vision and he told me, my son, I have called you and I will take you back. That is why I am here in front of you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For me, I love Jesus. From the bottom of my heart. There are many reasons for that. He never accused me. He never blamed me. He just told me, I will take you back. There is no one like Jesus. He will tolerate you. He's never tired of you. He will never accuse you. He will never blame you. So for me, I am indebted to Jesus. I have to pay back something little for that great love. I want to become a disciple. This is my earnest desire. When I came back, because I got this voice, I immediately told my father I have to go back. I told my mother, now I, I have to go back. Then my mother started to cry. You know the great gift of mothers, cry for no reason. They will just cry. So my mother started to cry. Then I told her, no, please, I have to go back. I came back and I reached the seminary. And I told my rector, Father, I have come back. Then he asked me, why did you come back? I told him, Father, I had an experience of God. Then he told me, you know the rule. Once you leave, you cannot come back. However, if you are convinced God appeared to you, you go and join any other seminary. This seminary, you can't because you broke the vows. Then I told him, Father, I feel that God has called me to the same seminary. Please, please accept me. Then the priest told me, Brother, you know, you have to start from the novitiate. Novitiate is six years back. I told him, Father, I have no problem. Please don't send me back home. I will restart from the novitiate because now I cannot live other than for Jesus. Then the rector told me, no problem, you wait in the chapel. So I waited in the chapel, they had a meeting and they have decided that let me continue now, but they will hold my vows for the time, but later they will tell me. They asked me to write down everything that happened. I wrote everything down, then finally they told me, yes, you just continue. Sisters and brothers, I continued, I got my vows, my diaconate, priesthood, everything in time as Jesus told me, I will take you back. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13 we read, you will seek me. But when you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me. If anybody is seeking God, if anybody wanted to see God, the Lord says, I myself will come to you. I myself will reveal to you. Jeremiah 29, 13. If you seek me, you will find me. If, if you want to see him, if you earnestly desire, he's real, he's true, he will come to you. Even during this international youth retreat, the Lord is here so visibly, so powerfully to manifest himself to you. Hallelujah. I told you my second challenge. I loved my father so much. I was praying and I asked Jesus, sisters and brothers, if you ask Jesus a question, he will answer you because he said, Jeremiah 33, 3, call to me and I will answer you. Jesus cannot pretend if we call him Jesus, he's just here. Can you see him? He's here. When you call him Jesus, say Jesus, Jesus. 
not like that that should come from the bottom of your heart jesus jesus he will come because numbers 23 19 he is not a human being to lie if he say he will fulfill that we have a god who never gives empty promises call to me and i will answer you and he answered me in prayer i asked jesus my lord jesus my dad i told you is now 98 years a great man we are four priests he is a man who brought forth four priests he is such a great personality he is a great man i have great respect then why did my father rejected me in my crisis this is what i asked jesus then the lord revealed to me gospel of matthew chapter 10 verse 37 Gospel of Matthew chapter 10 verse 37 you can also kindly repeat after me whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me i have never seen i have never understood the meaning of this scripture before now i understood my problem to become a disciple my problem to become a priest is that i loved my dad more than my god the first commandment says i am your god you shall not have any other god and you have to love your god with all your heart with all your heart with all your heart means your heart should not have any space for anybody else if you love your dad your mom your brother your sister your career your job anything you cannot become a true disciple the first step to become a true disciple is to have that complete detachment to this world i met a disciple an intercessor a prayer warrior in vienna in austria in a retreat a bible convention was going on and there was a perpetual adoration chapel and i have found a particular lady she is around 65 years old she was praying all throughout for the success of the retreat in between during the break i also go and join i have found five days retreat she is fasting she just come with a bottle of water she just drink water and she pray she does not know me she knows there is a convention she just wanted to pray for the blessing to come upon the people such a huge sacrifice and great love for god so i just asked her do you have a testimony to share with me that i am very impressed that you pray unceasingly for strangers for newcomers you wanted jesus to be known to be loved to be honored i am very impressed do you have a testimony this lady told me father i started to love jesus when i was 11 years old when i was just 11 years old i started to love jesus and she continued to say i am born in a family of four girls i am the fourth girl my mother used to call the first born daughter my eldest sister with great love as she used to call her my pearl though she is called grace for my mom she is her pearl so she is to call with a passionate love my pearl so i thought my mom will also call me as her pearl but she never called me not even once in my heart i thought maybe i am not her pearl i am not her favorite but we used to go to church mom used to take us to the church one day the mass was going on the the priest disappeared and i saw jesus during the mass there were thousands of people and jesus looked at me then i was 11 years old and he called me my pearl my pearl my pearl my pearl and he entered inside me i came to know i am a pearl i'm a favorite of my lord jesus that day i had never told anyone that my mom should call me as my pearl when i was thinking i thought maybe i am a girl 
and I am the fourth girl. Maybe my mom was expecting a boy, and again I am a girl, and I can never become her pearl. So I was thinking too much, and I was feeling self pity and self hatred. Then my Lord Jesus is looking at me and telling me, "You are not rejected. You are my fourth born daughter. You are so precious to me. You are like my pearl." And then she said, "My mom is a good person." just because she does not call me pearl that does not mean she rejected me i prayed to the lord and the lord told me why did my mom hated me why did mom rejected me why did my mom did not call me as her pearl this intercessor this prayerful lady revealed to me a revelation first time i noticed such an interpretation this is gospel of john chapter 15 verse 19 gospel of john chapter 15 verse 19 if the world the scripture goes like this if the world hates you remember it hated me before it hated you because you do not belong to the world and i have chosen you out of the world therefore the world hates you the world means we know john 316 god loved the world world means not the globe not the universe you and me a person your dad your mom a, the humanity so this this lady interpreted this is the way the lord told her if you the world means her mother the bible words can have more than 70 interpretations one single word because holy spirit is inside it though it has only one literal meaning it has more than 70 spiritual meanings that's why whenever a priest preaches the word of god you will be surprised the interpretations are very different and very deep now this is john 15 19 if you belong to your mother she interpreted to me to read this word like this and it was an answer to her problem to her question if you belong to your mother your mother would love you as her own because you do not belong to your mother but i have chosen you out of your mother therefore your mother hates you sisters and brothers if you are a true disciple of god people will hate you they will avoid you they cannot love you because you are a private property of god god blocked your mother to love you your mother cannot love you your dad cannot love you if they love you you will become their servants if they love you you will be, you will follow them god blocks it so that you may love the true god so that you may become a true disciple that is why sometimes you have so many questions why my mother behaves like this to me why i alone is been treated like this why i am hated why i am uh, uh, i am rejected why i am put aside why i feel this discrimination because you are a private property of god chosen eternally for his work for his ministry give a mighty clap to the lord Hallelujah So it's a privilege it's an honor to be hated to be rejected by this world so it's an honor to be rejected by your dad by your mom that's the way you can truly become a disciple of Jesus Hallelujah And the third problem challenge I told you I have found priest going astray the lord reminded me and he told me like this my son i have called you not to become another priest but to become another christ it's me who died for you no priest died for you hebrews chapter 12 from 2 we read let us therefore keep our eyes fixed on jesus the perfecter and the pioneer of our faith the, the the scripture never tells us to imitate anyone else one peter 2 2021 christ jesus has set an example to follow to be our way of life 2 2 2 2 2 
Corinthians 11:1 1, let us therefore be imitators of Christ Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 let us be imitators of Christ as I imitate Christ let us also imitate Christ St Paul says sisters and brothers we have no example we have no role model we have no superhero other than Jesus Jesus and Jesus alone many of the time we are discouraged we are disappointed because we look at this world no priest carried the cross hung on the cross in Calvary and saved us it's Jesus before priesthood was Jesus he is everything as you are the youth you are the youngsters let no one no one influence you other than Lord Jesus Christ Saint Paul himself said this is 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 1 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses from 2 he says 1 Corinthians 2 chapter 2 verse 2 let's repeat this word of God for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified a true disciple will follow will imitate Jesus the crucified and Jesus alone he has no other role model he is never scandalized he is never offended he is never been derailed because his eyes are fixed and focused on Jesus the crucified there are many who are discouraged disappointed they backslide they withdraw from the mighty works of God there are people who start following Jesus they wanted to be a disciple but along the way their attention is derailed because they just compare they start following human leaders there's a powerful scripture Saint Paul is teaching the disciples this is 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 23 1 Corinthians 7 23 you were bought with a price do not become slaves of human masters you were bought with a price this price is the blood of Jesus and he is telling you now you should not become slaves to human masters you may find many human beings very good but don't imitate them never hold a human with a high esteem if you hold any human with a high esteem that human will be the first person to pierce your heart let no one misguide you Jesus 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 alone is our role model our perfect example our pioneer our savior our master our redeemer the great I am the great high priest the good shepherd the way the truth the life the alpha the omega the word made flesh he alone he alone needs for our salvation no one else and nothing else let's clap our hands for Jesus <laughs> hallelujah 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 my dear sisters and brothers somebody one day asked me a question father I serve God in a center but my problem I am opposed sometimes people just they are against me but nobody tells me what is the wrong I am doing can you pray over me and tell me if I am something doing wrong if God is not pleased to be to me father I wanted to serve God with a clean heart but I have a lot of oppositions people are against me they don't like me they avoid me they make many comments they do complain against me and I want to know if I am doing something wrong if why they are opposing me I don't understand maybe I am doing things that is hurting God please pray over me tell me I am ready to change while praying the Holy Spirit revealed Psalm chapter 38 verses 19 and 20 this is Psalm chapter 38 19 and 20 the word of God says those who are my foes those who are my enemies without cause are mighty and many are those who hate me wrongfully those who render me evil for good are my adversaries because I follow after good 
they hate me wrongfully because i follow after good why do they hate you is it because you are doing wrong no when you follow after good you will be hated says the scripture let no one misguide you when you become a true disciple you will be rejected you will be accu- falsely accused gospel of luke chapter 6 verse 22 therefore we read gospel of luke chapter 6 verse 22 the word of god says blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you revile you and defame you on account of the son of man hallelujah do, did you do you think you have never been hated you have never been excluded nobody has reviled you nobody has defamed you if you never had such an experience that means you are not at a disciple a disciple will be scripture says falsely accused no disciple is greater than the master if they called the master belsabul if they called jesus a thief if jesus if they called jesus a friend of a prostitute if they called jesus the son of a carpenter don't expect more than that praise the lord praise the lord somebody a, a, a team member team members are like disciples of god he asked me a permission the permission is this he is confused that he is going for a party he said now i was a drunkard in the past i used to be a drunkard then i came i attended a retreat now i stopped and i don't want to be part of any alcohol or any of those those kinds of substance now there is a good friend of mine he wanted me to go and join his party which is like a marriage if i don't go he will be offended and if i go god will be offended but now the problem in the past i have participated in some of those things but i don't feel fit i, I don't feel part of that i am alone there was many people but now i feel all alone the more i come close to god the more people avoid me they don't want to even talk or associate with me i don't know if it is something wrong i have to be mixed with them there are people who say if you want to win people you have to be identified with their with the people with their culture with their characters you have to become one of them sisters and brothers let no one misguide you you cannot imitate you cannot save a drunkard by drinking alcohol with him you cannot save an alcoholic by drinking alcohol with him you can only save people not by identifying yourself with the people and their culture only by identifying yourself with jesus and the biblical culture and tradition because they should know what is right and what is wrong it is through you they should know the difference prophet jeremiah chapter 17 was chapter 15 was 17 we read i did not sit in the company of merry makers nor did i rejoice under the weight of your hand i sat alone for you had filled me with indignation the scripture says prophet jeremiah could not find joy in a party he could not rejoice with the merry makers because the hand of god was heavy upon him saint maria faustina kowalska had a habit of going to the club and dancing one day she was doing such a dance then she saw crucified jesus appeared with the blood all over the body she could since then never enjoy what was going on she ran away that's the way she entered into a convent if you are a true disciple you cannot find a joy in anything that is secular that is worldly we read why people hate us 1 peter chapter 4 from 4 1 peter chapter 4 from 4 we read they are surprised see from 3 if you read you understand you 
you have already spent enough time in doing what is the what the gender is like to do living in licentiousness passions drunkenness revels carousing and lawless idolatry they are surprised that you no longer join them in the same excesses of dissipation and so they blaspheme why do people hate you because you no longer join their party you no longer enjoy in the filthy things of this world the more you become a true disciple the more you will be hated we read now this is psalm chapter 88 was 8 this is book of psalm chapter 88 was 8 this is a prayer in tears from king david he prayed in this way you have caused my companions to shun me you have made me a thing of horror to them i am shut in so that i cannot escape my eye grows dim through sorrow every day i call on you o lord i spread out my hands to you you have caused my companions to shun me sisters and brothers the more you come close to the lord the more the people will run away from you the people will hate you they will avoid you they will reject you they will consider you as a threat for what they are doing we had a retreat and during the retreat someone fell sick and we took this person to the hospital and a nurse came she came to know we are from the retreat center then she came and she said father i want to talk i have too many problems my father is sick my mother has problem i am not married my siblings have no school fees we are suffering a lot so we told this nurse please come and attend the retreat listen to the word of god then she said father i will try but i have a job but i will try but she did not come again we met her the second time when we went she again said her she has too many problems we told her come attend the retreat listen to the word of god she said she will try again she did not come third time we went she is coming and telling she has so many issues so many problems mysterious sicknesses so much of suffering her marriage is not taking place lot of issues then we told her please we told you come spend some time before god listen to the word of god and the lord is going to bless you again she said she will try she did not come three times we said then i had a doubt is she genuine she is telling she has problems and we told her the solution but she does not want to accept the solution then what is the reason why she cannot come she is telling she has so many problems and sufferings but the solution we are giving she is not able to receive that's the time we got a new revelation from the bible this is gospel of john chapter 3 verses from 19 to 21 listen carefully it can be the same with your friends this can be the same with many whom you are struggling with the scripture says this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil for all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed but those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in god for all who do evil hate the light sisters and brothers we know what is light scripture says this is john chapter 12 verse 8 i am the light of the world anyone who love evil who do evil they hate jesus they hate light they cannot come to the light because their deeds will be exposed there are people who enjoy who rejoice in evil in filthy things in sinfulness 
that is why they cannot release themselves to come close to god no one can become a true disciple or follower if they enjoy in sinful things eventually we came to know this particular nurse had an an extra marital affair a kind of a relationship with a doctor who was already a married man she used to get some money some some kind of benefits so she enjoyed in that wrong relationship which eventually made her to be in bondage that's why she could not come for the retreat she was in that bondage she was chained in a, a evil that is why those who practice evil hate the light that means what as we are his followers we wanted to become a follower of christ we know somebody somewhere is in a bondage they cannot come for the retreat they cannot follow jesus that means they are being attacked by the evil they are in a wrong relationship maybe they are addicted to a relationship maybe they are addicted to pornography maybe they are addicted to adultery maybe they are addicted to drugs gambling or computer games or any kind of social media or any kind of drugs they cannot come out of come out by themselves they need intercession a true disciple is an intercessor a true disciple is a prayer warrior we will pray sisters and brothers peter said peter said master i will never deny you even if i lose my life jesus looked at peter and he saw someone standing behind him do you know who was that a man somebody with the two big horns and a big tail poor peter he could not see that and he said i will never deny you jesus said this same night before the cock crows before the sun rises you will deny me three times peter miserably failed Luke 22 31 we read Jesus said Simon Simon Satan has sifted you like wheat but i have prayed for you so that you may not lose the faith once you have strengthened you have to strengthen your brothers my dear sisters and brothers peter denied jesus but he came to know his master will never deny him 2 timothy 2 13 2 timothy 2 13 <laughs> even if we are faithless he is faithful because he cannot deny himself praise the lord praise the lord peter cried his heart out when he looked at jesus he came to know my master is praying for me and he returned if peter who was with jesus who was a disciple who was an apostle who was appointed by jesus who touched jesus what about you and me we are so vulnerable at any time we can deny our master we can at any time we can fall there is no one who is so strong that he will never fall therefore 1 corinthians 10 from 11 and 12 we read those who stand let them pray that they may not fall away as we are meditating upon the discipleship the true discipleship a true disciple is the one who follow the master and our master is one single person called jesus christ and what did he do we imitate him he prayed for the one who denied him so if we hear somebody has fallen away somebody is in a trouble pray for them without judging them maybe you know some people very prayerful mighty warriors they prayed and healings took place they started prayer groups now no longer they are in prayer they are in crisis they don't even speak about god you may be knowing some people once upon a time they were powerful disciples but no longer they are in that same seal never accuse them they are attacked by the evil one pray for them the same way jesus prayed that's why peter came back and started to serve god with that unfading seal with an undivided heart praise the lord peter therefore when he wrote the 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 epistle he wrote 1 peter 5 8 
he is advising everyone keep alert keep alert because the satan is roaming around like a roaring lion to devour to devour anyone who is seeking god satan is always roaming around to seek to destroy the souls that is why it is very important that we need to always pray for our brothers our sisters a true disciple is an intercessor a prayer warrior a true disciple never judges anyone a true disciple never reject anyone instead will make a compassionate accompaniment a true disciple is basically a consoling agent of god the one who consoles jesus hallelujah 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 one day i prayed to jesus like this my lord jesus how do i know i am growing little more in your discipleship my lord jesus how do i know i have a little spiritual growth you know nobody wanted to remain in p3 for three years primary three you have to be promoted to p4 p5 p6 nobody wanted to say that i repeated class 7 two years no we wanted promotion in the spirituality also it is the same you cannot just remain in the primary level you need to progress to the secondary level you need to progress to the degree to the masters even to a phd even in spirituality we have different layers of spirituality saint therese of avila this is what she she explains in the book called interior castle there are different grades of prayer a disciple is also the same way we a disciple has to be transformed into the likeness of the master i prayed asked the lord how do i know i am growing little more in my discipleship then the lord inspired me like this first time i hear i get such an inspiration one of the prayers i like the most is the prayer of saint francis this prayer is called prayer of peace lord make me a channel of your peace the lord instructed me like this my son when you are able to live this prayer through your life that's the time i accept you have grown little more in your discipleship when you are able to pray the prayer of peace lord make me an instrument of your peace that's the time you are growing little more in your discipleship let us look at the content of this prayer lord make me a channel of your peace where there is hatred let me sow love where there is disunity let me bring peace not to be loved but to love not to be consoled but to console not to receive but to give lord make me an instrument of your peace not to be encouraged but to encourage not to be consoled but to console sisters and brothers we say and we wanted we have to be a disciple but am i here looking for comfort there are people say i cannot go to that place i cannot go to that community i cannot go to that company i cannot be in that place because there is full of hatred that is the very reason jesus is sending you into that place of hatred to bring love that's the way you are a true disciple imagine god yahweh sent moses into the palace of pharaoh pharaoh is an incarnation is a representation of the evil one and the lord sent moses into the midst of that evil and made him as a holy prophet he wanted you to give not to receive are we discouraged when we are not encouraged are we waiting to be appreciated to be consoled to be comforted we are not a disciple a disciple is all about giving and giving and giving until it pains as saint mother teresa of calcutta says hallelujah we kindly stand that is why the electricity has gone <laughs> praise the lord praise hallelujah. hallelujah let us get out of ourselves 
Let us ask the Lord, Lord, I want to be your disciple, a true disciple, a sincere follower. I want to express my love for you, my Lord. Please raise your hands, praise and worship the Lord. Let him speak, let him heal, let him reveal his will to you. Let him speak a personal word to you so that your ears may tune to the voice of your creator, your most beloved Jesus. He's your best friend. Let's worship him. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Speak to us, O Lord. Move inside our heart. The Lord is moving in your midst. The Lord is calling out your name. God is blessing you. Shalini, Reuben, Jaden, Francis, Lawrence, Fatima, Perpetua, Fiona, Lavina. Ivy, Joyce, Christina, Jason, Ephraim, Noah, Julie, Sonia, Rita, Tina, Juliana, Ross, Stella, Lona, Christo, Charles, Aloysius, Gemma, Dominic, Augustine, Shobha, Emmanuel, Joel, Winnie, Agnes, Caroline, the Lord is here, is moving in your midst. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Many with allergy, different type of allergies, God is healing you. Someone with a severe spinal cord problem, God is healing you. Someone with a very coarse vein, pain, the Lord is healing you. Many with a sleeping disorder, God is healing you. Somebody with a stroke, with that you are paralyzed. God is restoring back your complete health. Somebody has speech difficulty. God is restoring back your speech. Somebody with a kind of Parkinson's. God is consoling you. He's healing you. Someone with the epilepsy. You have too much fear. God is touching you. Somebody, you are discerning your vocation. More than 17 people, young boys and young girls, God is calling you to become priests and nuns. L receive this call. It's a great honor to be a priest, to be a nun. Jesus is standing beside you. Don't be confused, my son. There is no vocation greater than priesthood. It is greater than being a pilot, being a doctor, being an engineer. It's only priest who can heal, who can forgive, who can set people free. The lame will walk, the blind will see, the mute will speak. When a priest pray over the sick, receive this priesthood. God is blessing many. You are praying for the gift of a life partner. God is answering your prayer. God is bringing the one with whom you want to share your life. God is removing blocks for your higher studies, for your visa. God is sending you. He is booking you with the flight ticket. Your blocks God is re removing. Many, God is helping you to make a sincere confession. The Lord is removing body pain, shoulder pain, knee pain, joint pains. Somebody who broke your right hand, God is restoring health back to you. The Lord is telling you, you are my sheep. As a shepherd carries a sheep in the shoulder, I carry you, my son. I carry you, my daughter. Many who never experienced the love of a biological father, heavenly father is hugging you, saying, you are my son. You are not an orphan. I care for you. God is consoling a girl. You are not an orphan. I am your mother. The Lord is telling you. Many who have a broken relationship with your parents, God is restoring, God is taking you to your parents, God is asking you kneel down, say sorry to your parents, ask them to bless you and your blocks will be removed. You are my Judith, God is telling you, you are my Judith, you are my Judith, you will fight for me, you will represent me. May Almighty God bless you 
and protect you the father son and the holy spirit this is a youth retreat and some are not youth you are hiding in between don't worry god knows you he loves you though you are hiding god loves you don't hide you are a small child before your great god praise the lord i beg you please keep me in your prayers i am in rwanda in africa you are most welcome there's a beautiful pilgrim place called our lady of kibeho you are welcome to visit mother mary she is truly present there you are welcome to rwanda please keep me in your prayers i beg you if you can pray one decade of the rosary 10 hail marys every day so you also become a missionary though you may not work there when you pray you take part in that mission work 10 hail marys one decade will you pray yes. those who can pray kindly raise your hands i am very 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 grateful thank you so much may god bless you